Happy New Year, everybody! It is December 31st, New Year's Eve 2018, 4.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is your good pal, Jared Dog, wishing you a Happy New Year on the 420 Report. My daily live video blog that I do every day at 4.20 p.m. or as close as possible. Hey, how are you? Timothy and Jerry and Nadia, shout out to you guys. And Doug McGraw joining in. Good to see you, man. It's been a while. Look, Doug McGraw is one of the first guys to give me a gig in show business, in stand-up comedy. Not in show business. I've been in show business since I was like eight years old, one way or another. But doing stand-up comedy on the road for the first time. Joker's Comedy Club, Omaha, Nebraska. Holy crap, man. I've been traveling all over the country that time, showcasing and doing guest sets at comedy clubs all over the place. You know, you do like a five-hour drive. You get like three minutes on stage to show them what you're made out of. And then usually the decision maker that would determine if you can get a spot and get booked at that club. They weren't even fucking there half the time. Doug McGraw actually was there. He's actually there. He showed up. He said, dude, you got something. Let me get you on the schedule. So, hey, good to see you, man. Trish is here. Jody, happy new year to buddy. Kool-Aid man checking in from Bay City, Michigan. Anthony McGuire, happy new year to you too, Barbara. This weekend, uh, I've got two big shows coming up. One outside of Rochester, Minnesota. The Pondy, that's this Friday, January 4th. I'll be joined by my co-star, Jeremy Cartwright. And then this Saturday, January 5th, I had to Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin for a sold-out show at the Sandbar. I think they're getting pretty close to sold out Friday night, but that's also a big place, man. Like two or 300 people, they're going to pack them in, I hope. I hope we're going to pack them in at two or 300 people. That'd be a fucking great way to kick off 2019, I'll tell you that. But I do know this Saturday night in Chippewa Falls at the Sandbar is completely sold out. It has been for months now, as is the rest of their grassroots comedy tour series coming up, featuring them the greatest, what do I, Earth's mightiest headliners from all over the country. Hey, Tamsin, Happy New Year to you, too. And I've got a lot of fun shows coming up in 2019. I've got my new microphone working. It's just the 420 report right on there. I'm going to do different logos on there every day. I feel like a real sports commentator. I don't even know how it sounds. It might sound like total shit on your end. I don't know. <laughs> how does my new microphone sound? Let me know. It's just something that I got for Christmas. This is probably one of my best Christmas gifts ever. One of my favorite ones ever. I've gotten a lot of good ones in the past, but this is one of my favorite ever. I gave it to myself. So fuck it, just for your entertainment value. Uh, what else coming up, man? I'm wishing everybody an amazing 2019. I really am. And my wish for 2019 is to stop the complaining, stop the whining, stop the bickering and the bullshit on social media, the verbal one-upmanship battle of wits, which really all it does is create wedges in personal relationships. I very rarely see two people become better friends because they had an argument on social media. A lot of times it's all the bullshit. If you don't like it, fucking defriend me. You know, that's not progress. That That's not building relationships. That's not what this is meant for. This is meant for being fun. This is meant for, yeah, you know, I get it. You want to express yourself, but you don't have to fucking take on every battle. We don't have to fucking argue and bicker so much. You know, enough with the political bullshit. Yeah, changes do need to be made. I get it. But just be the change you want to see happen. You know, just because you want to see that change happen doesn't mean that's the kind of difference you got to make in somebody else's life. Maybe they want their life just to be the way it is. Maybe they're happy with it. Maybe they got their own differences and changes they want to make. So just because you have something different, you make it. You do that different thing for you. You know, let other people do the different things for them. Whatever the change you want to see made, you just be that change. The whole world just kept, well, what's the phrase? If everybody just swept their own front porch, the whole world would be clean. Jeremy Cartwright checking in. Good to see you, man. I was just talking about you. My co-star this Friday night at the Pondy in Rochester, Minnesota, right outside of Rochester. New cool place that they've got going, a new restaurant that they're going to be promoting. They're going to be kicking off 2019 with the Comedy Night with the Mighty Jared Dog, Jared Dog Comedy Roadshow, joined by my co-star Jeremy Cartwright. Really talented dude. I ran into him years and years and years ago. It's, I think that was a gig in Minnesota as well, if I'm not mistaken. And then we did lots of stuff together. And then he took some time off a little bit. 
and now he's getting back into the comedy game, and I'm going to be uh, thrilled to have you joining me as my wingman this Friday night at the Pondy in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'll put all the information that you need, any of my Minnesota peeps that are watching right now, I'll put the information in the video description above or in the comments below, and wherever you're watching from, wherever that is, just leave that in the comment section, even if it's on the replay, and I'll let you know when I'll be performing in your area again real soon. Got a lot of stuff coming up in 2019. I'm excited, man. I'm totally pumped. You know, 2018 is a year of break breakthroughs for me. Breakthroughs and breakdowns. Breakthroughs and breakdowns. Started off, my fucking van broke down. The 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 battle worn, road tested, Jer Dog, Van Gina one-man tour bus that I probably put almost 300,000 miles on. I put on, what did I buy that? I bought it at about 100,000 miles. That's like a new car for me, 100,000 miles. Most people got to trade their cars in, you know. They, it hits 30 or 40 or 50,000 miles. They got to try to trade it in and, and get the new fangled thing. If you're a road comic and you're putting 1,000 miles, 2,000 miles on average per week traveling around the country, all that fucking thing is going to do is accumulate wear and tear and just break down in unpredictable moments all the time, which is exactly what happened last January. I'm on my way to Wisconsin. I'm crossing over the Mississippi Bridge from Iowa into Wisconsin. And as I'm crossing the Mississippi River Bridge, the temperature gauge shoots straight up into the red. Smoke starts pouring out from under the hood. I thought I was going to, yeah, and there's nowhere to pull over either. I don't know if you've ever traveled over that bridge. There's not like a shoulder on the bridge where you can pull over and deal with a car breakdown. You're either going over the side of that motherfucker or you're going to be causing a 20-car pileup behind you and someone else is going to be going over the side of that son bitch bridge. I was freaked out man it probably and i had to slow way down to like 40 35 miles an hour because you know it's, it's overheating you know so on one hand i had to go slow enough to keep it from blowing up right then and there but on the other hand i had to go fast enough to make it over the bridge without the fucking thing blowing up while i was still stuck on it fortunately luckily and just in time i made it over took the first exit which is like still another mile down the road freaking out white knuckle up the entire time probably the scariest moment i've ever had doing stand-up comedy i've been in this a long time for a lot of people that'd be getting up on stage and trying to tell jokes to strangers make them laugh for an hour hour and a half straight for me it was crossing that mississippi river bridge with a overheating van about the blow up and that's how my 2018 started. And then from there, every other thing that I have at my disposal, like all my, my, my computer equipment broke down, my laptop fried. One time when I was walking home from the library, I had it in my backpack. It started raining. The whole laptop fucking fried. I had to go get it fixed. Uh, my, I had my hard drives crashed. that had like five years worth of videos. I videotape almost every show that I do. And not every show, but almost every show. So there's like hundreds of hours of video on this hard portable hard drive that I had. And that fucking thing crashed. I lost like five years worth of videos. That sucked. I actually cried. I can't believe I'm admitting this to you right now. But I actually cried when that happened. That was devastating. And uh, what else broke down? My video camera itself fucking broke down. Um, I had all kinds of shit to break down. But a lot of breakthroughs as well. A lot of breakthroughs, and comedy has not been more exciting than it has been this last year. What else did I want to say? I'm, I'm getting distracted by the comments. Hey, Happy New Year, Bud Man, checking in. Happy New Year, buddy. Dave Johnson, Richland, Iowa. I've got a lot of shows coming up from Iowa. I'll make sure to comment. I'll go into my schedule and take a look. Wherever you're watching from right now, just leave that in the comments below, and then I'll come back and let you know when I'll be performing in your area coming up soon in 2019. It's going to be amazing. Oh, and shout out to everybody this last weekend that brought me in, all the folks at the Water and Hole in Jamestown, Missouri. I met a lot of new friends. I had some longtime friends show up. It was good to see you, Pam and Scott, and also shout out to Jeff and Stephanie and Mel and Carrie and Elise 
and Tim and Bill, and I know I'm probably forgetting somebody, but all the cool people at the Water and Hole Bar and Grill in Jamestown, Missouri is a real small town right in the middle of nowhere in Missouri, man, like 20 miles still from Jefferson City, which is where the nearest hotel was. I was a little bit freaked out. <laughs> not really, not really. You know, I've been all over this country. I've been in some crazier situations, but they got it a nice big crowd. It was pretty much sold out, standing room only, a lot of fun. And it was the first time ever. Uh, so shout out to Callan if you're watching. I don't know if you will be or not. If you are, just hit me up with a thumbs up in the comment or maybe you'll hit the like button. And if you're and whoever's watching right now, if you're so inclined, hit the share button. And uh, so I can wish them, all your friends and, and family, a happy 2019. Um, but this dude, after the show, I'm hanging out. I'm doing the meet and greet like I normally do. The little post party, after party, show wraps up. You hang around. You, I like to go around. I like to meet everybody possibly that I can that night that came out. Personally thank them for being there. Maybe give a little one-on-one -on -one personal joke. Have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Keep people laughing. I call it the show after the show. You know, just to make sure everybody gets their fucking money's worth. And I like it. It's fun. That's the fun part for me is to go around and meet the new people when I'm and go to new places. That If I'm not doing that, well, what the fuck is the point of all of this? It's people like you that I get. To, I, do, I would not know you otherwise had I not traveled around the country and meeting people after the show. So that's my favorite part. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. So it was totally humbling. <laughs> Uh, and it was definitely a new experience. It definitely a first for me when a, uh, just a random customer who liked my show enough went around the bar, took up a collection of tips and donations, basically as a bribe to get me to do another 20-minute encore set at 1 a.m., which I gladly accepted. Hell, why not? I'm going to be there talking shit anyway. Give me the fucking microphone. I'll do another 20 minutes. You know, why not? I got enough material in the bank. I basically just walked around and roasted everybody in there. They fucking loved it. That's my favorite part as well is just the off-the-cuff stuff where you generating your material based on the crowd that's there present. Even if it's only a few people left at the end of the night, the after party, 1 a.m., and uh, you can just make up material on the fly. You know, I don't know if I videotaped it and put it on YouTube. It might be fucking embarrassing to do that, but it's a lot of fucking fun. And they seem to have fun with it. And I took it right till last call. The bartender was like, wrap it up, wrap it up, man. You got to wrap it up. You got to get these fuckers out of here. So that was definitely a first, man. I thought it was really cool. And I think I made like an extra hundred bucks <laughs> just doing what I normally would have done anyway, but walking around with the fucking microphone in my hand. This is actually my first New Year's Eve in like 20 years where I have not had a show at night. Uh, I think the last one was New Year's Eve 1999 going into the year 2000. That was the last time that I had that I had New Year's Eve off from doing comedy. That was the year when everybody was tripping out about all the computers breaking down because of Y2K. I don't even quite understand what the logic was behind that because up until that time, something like they'd always entered in the dates with just the two digits instead of the four digits. So the computer was going to reset and think that it was 1901 instead of 2001 or something like that and people are freaked out that all the computer systems were going to crash traffic was going to come to a screeching halt volcanoes were going to explode crops were going to fail mass bedlam in the street the zombie apocalypse will ensue so i'm like fuck it i don't want to be traveling for that shit i had a couple new year's eve gigs before that but that was the last time i had new year's eve off i've got new year's eve off tonight I'm not quite sure exactly what we're going to do, but I know that Mrs. Jerdog and myself are definitely going to head it up. We're probably going to get in trouble. I may be doing a Facebook Live video later on tonight from jail, possibly begging you to take up a GoFundMe or a donations or PayPal me or some, some bail money. That very well could happen. You never know. I'm up for anything at this point. New Year's Eve. 2018, my first New Year's Eve, not doing a comedy show in 20 years. And usually I party pretty hard when I'm doing the comedy show, but I still got to keep my wits about me. A little bit of professionalism you got to maintain, you know. 
like even last Friday night when they're sending up tons of different kinds of shots to the stage during the show, I got to pace myself. Can't just slam all those motherfuckers at once just like this because that's what the audience wanted me to do. Got to maintain a little bit of professionalism, yet keep it fun, exciting, and party mode at all possible times. That's why you're here, and that's what I do, and that's why I like to keep it fun, and that's what I wish everybody going into 2019. Just fun, fun, excitement, lighten up. Don't be so sensitive. Enough of the complaining, enough of the whining. Politics ain't going the way you want to go. Fuck it. Just live your life the way you want to live it. Do your thing, whatever that may be. I wish everybody have an amazing, fun, hilarious 2019. I've said it before. I'll say it again. There are three things we can all do to make the world a better place. Number one, always have a sense of humor. Number two, support your local businesses. Number three, get shit-faced as much as you fucking can. We're going to do all three tonight, baby. New Year's Eve 2019. Also, I almost forgot, shout out to all the folks at Palmyra Pub, Palmyra, Nebraska, the fourth year in a row where we packed that bitch out. Palmyra Pub, Sue and Steve and Dalton and it's either Rachel or Renee. I'm sorry. I'm being very rude. I can't remember. It's either Ra Rachel or Renee. But everybody there at Paul Myra Pub, Paul Myra, Nebraska, my co-star, Ed Burroughs. Dude is in a wheelchair, and he still does stand-up comedy. It's fucking amazing. This weekend. All right, one more time for if you missed it when I first got started. Rochester, Minnesota, Friday night, January 4th. The Pondy. I'll put the information for that show and how you can get tickets in the video description above just as soon as I get done here. This Saturday night, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. The Sandbar, it's sold out. So if you don't have tickets, I'm sorry, but you're fucked. But still a shout out to Seth and everybody at the Sandbar and Chippewa Falls for bringing me in. Part of the Grassroots Comedy Tour series. They've been sold out for months now, the whole series, all the way through till May. So I'm very happy to hear that. Comedy's on the upswing, man, and we need it now more than ever. You know, that is one good thing about people getting so divisive and crazy on social media and online. Number one, the political correctness expectation is through the fucking roof. But then that makes everything taboo and easy to joke on. It gives me something to rebel against. Number two, with all the fucking bickering and people getting stressed out in their lives, now more than ever, you need to get out to your bar, share some, share some laughs, have some drinks, blow off steam. Happy New Year's. I hope you have a 20, a great 2019. And I'll be back maybe tomorrow if I'm not too hungover at 4.20 p.m. Eastern time or as close as possible. Until then, dog bless America.